Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Sabater again, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times here with Joseph Dykus, Mike Leftcow. It's uh, playoff time in the CCS and the NCS, and uh, our guys look, are you guys ready? Yes, uh, I feel like I've been waiting seven, eight weeks for you to say it's playoff time, and it's finally here. Wow, I, I, I tend to enjoy the regular season, try to, you know, um, every week try to, to find something special out of every week. And uh, I think we've seen uh, a lot of great stuff that through the first uh, 11 weeks of this 16-week uh, uh, run. And now we we've have. got five weeks to go, um, three in, for the section playoffs, and then and then two once we get on to the CIF uh, regionals and state. Mike Lefkow, you ready for uh, you ready for some playoff action? Yeah, I enjoy. I mean, I always enjoy uh, the Sunday they see the teams, and then um, yeah, I enjoy the playoffs. I mean, some of the mismatches I don't enjoy, but there are also some good games, and yeah, they're kind of fun to watch. Um, you get pretty fired up, Mike Lefka. You're uh, you're pretty fired up about some teams that uh, had winning records that uh, that didn't get in the playoffs. Uh, um. Why don't you uh, – you can have the floor. What What do you think about uh, some of these teams with uh, winning records? Uh, well, as far as I know, between the two sections, North Coast section and Central Coast section, there are seven teams with seven or more wins that are not in the playoffs, and I think that's wrong, flat out wrong. The four teams in the North Coast section are Liberty, Antioch, Hayward and Alameda, they were all seven and three, and they're not in the playoffs, and that's a travesty. And in the Central Coast section, they are Prospect, Cupertino, and Fremont High of Sunnyvale. Prospect was eight and two. You get 80% on a math test or an English test or a history test, you're probably going to get at worst to C plus, and you're probably going to get a B. And yet you win eight out of 10 in your football season. And you're told, sorry, we're, you're well, not going to make it. They, I'm gonna, I, I know the CCS system. They've created a pool for quote unquote C league teams that they can play in their own little pool. They just haven't created an extra division for those teams. So those teams traditionally, they don't have to go up against the Wilcoxes or some of the other powerhouse public school teams and get beat 60 or 70 to nothing. And they are given a, an opportunity to play teams at their own level. And, you know, they win seven, eight games. It happens every year. Gun a couple of years ago. Um, until the CCS creates another division, which well, I think we mentioned yeah. that last year. I think I might have even written about, wrote about it last year. Um, and it doesn't sound as if that's the way CCS's uh, member schools want to go. At least that's what I've heard. Um, we're going to have situations every single year in the CCS where somebody in that West Valley division, the BVAL, or, or there's one other C league, I believe. Well, Santa or, Lucia, yeah, the one with Cupertino. Um, they're just they're they're given the opportunity to play teams at their own level where kids can go out for football and not worry about getting beat seventy to nothing against somebody that's got you know somebody that plays at a much different level. It's just that they don't have a playoff spot for those teams. They well, they schedule they schedule at their own level, and they create a sixth division. You well, could easily yeah. create a sixth division. Well, we we know team. that we we wrote about it. We know that they don't want it, or at least that's what that's what the they're saying that the member schools yeah. have not pushed for a sixth division. The interesting yeah. thing, no, the principals at Prospect Fremont and uh, and uh, Cupertino and see what they might have to say. Yeah. Well, I think Lefty, you've uh, you've mentioned it. I think it was last year where you get these teams in the CCS because of automatic qualifiers and whatnot. You have you know three and seven, four and six teams from the A leagues that make it in. Instead of expanding the playoffs, why not instead take away one automatic qualifying spot from one of the A leagues and give it to? Well, then then those A leagues are going to want to be those A league teams are going right. to want to be in B and C leagues, or, well, or get, rid of, the, or get rid of all the letters and 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 let's play it out. And and I've been in those meetings through the years. They I, I, those teams like those teams that are in the A leagues 
they're sacrificing playing the best of the best in the in their leagues because they know that they're going to get in the playoffs. You know, if Cupertino or Prospect wanted to get there, they would have to get out of the C League, which means win the C League championship. So Del Mar won the C League this year, mm -hmm. right? They're going to be in the B League next year. If they win a B League, they're going to be in an A League, and then they're going to be in the same spot that those other teams are. So there's a ladder, there's a system in which they can keep moving up. Now, traditionally, those schools do not. They they go from being a, B, a C League champion to a B League uh, near the bottom of the pack, and then they're back in the C League. It's just a back and forth thing. Well, well okay, I, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, what are the reasons that certain schools decide to play in C leagues and stay in C leagues? Is it that the school doesn't, is it the administrative, the school district? Is it the administration? I, don't know. I, I think we're going down a, uh, uh, I think we're going down a path that we don't want to go down. All right, I, we, I, we, I think the C leagues are the C league teams are just, that's their level of football. If the CCS wants to create a division for them, great. If they don't, you know, that's their, that's their decision. And it's yeah. not, and it's not the CCS staff, it's their member schools that are making these decisions when you go to these board of manager meetings, you know? So if if the C leagues wanted to push for an extra division, they would uh, put it in the, uh, put it on the agenda, have them vote and see what happens. But uh, as far as right. I know, it, it has never made the, it's not in the, on the agenda. You could be right. Um, I so. just think it's a shame that those three teams all won seven or more games. and. Yeah. Well, they're not in with the that. Camp. With that said, the CCS system is still, I believe, miles better than what the NCS currently has. Because a team sure like Liberty, a team like Antioch, is not missing the playoffs in the CCS. I'm not sure it's miles better. It, you know, there are a couple provisions, but if the NCS goes to this proposed division where next year uh, teams can move up a maximum of two divisions or down a maximum of two divisions for the playoffs, then I don't think the CCS has an advantage. You mean, you mean teams aren't making that decision. The NCS is making that decision for them to create. Well, a I would hope the NCS would. Yeah, because I mean, I don't think everybody's going to want to go down. Nobody's going to want to go up. But, uh, but I mean, it's still, it, it's just, to me, it's flat out wrong that Liberty is not in the playoffs this year when they beat, and I, I have, all the respect in the world for Heritage High School and Dave Fogelstrom, but Heritage lost to Liberty by 31 points this season. Oh, I mean, you don't. I mean, they're in the playoffs, and Liberty is. It's and it's it's silly yeah. that it's silly that that uh, you've got leagues in the NCS where you've got five schools in five different divisions. That's right. silly. I mean, why are they in the same league? At least in the CCS, you know that the C League teams. Del Mar, Prospect, there's, what, eight teams in that C-League? Yep. They're all in a C-League. They're not in a league with Wilcox or Los Gatos or, you know, Palo Alto, well, you know. But in the CCS, they're rewarding a team like Palma that's three and seven. Again, and they, are in a strong, are, they are in a strong league. Three of those losses were forfeits. They had a, three of the losses yeah. were re reversed from wins to forfeits because of – I don't know what they – I assume it was probably an ineligible player. But, you know, they go from what should have been 6-4 and four to 3-7 and seven because of forfeits. And yet they're being rewarded by being in the playoffs at 3-7. and seven. I mean, I don't know. To me, the system is just – maybe you're right. Maybe nobody cares. But – I'm not saying that they don't care. I'm just saying that they're, they've created a system – for the 10 week high school season that tries to put teams in their own pools. Well, that's I think why you, that's, a that's why you see this. That's why you see a five division league. Is it five now? And the P now that the PAL and the Santa Clara Valley merged, I think it's five, five divisions. And you got four divisions in the BVAL. Mm -hmm. You got a gazillion divisions in the league down in the Southern end of the CCS. Um, yeah, four uh, divisions in there. But league. anyhow, um, let's talk about some of the game, some of the the matchups that are out there. I mean, uh, you know, you're looking now at the NCS Open slash Division One, where two teams that were in Division Two last year actually made the Division Two final with uh, San Ramon beating Campo. 
now they're both in open division one and uh uh san ramon valley is going to be at home to play campolino on on friday night kevin macy has made it clear that he obviously uh is not a fan of competitive equity uh mm -hmm. doesn't think campo belongs in that division mike Lefkow, he's been saying this for years now now he's in division one open division one if if campo pulls off the upset they're they're playing de la salle in week two of the playoffs and unless logan plays the game of everybody's lives and pulls off uh pulls the off all-time great offset <laughs> so uh, mike left cow what do you think about uh kevin macy continuing continuing to stay on message even after the dramatic win over akalani's on friday night well i think he has a point i mean i i think that camp window probably should be a division probably a division two yeah. school I don't think they should be Division One. I. I mean, if you look at the attendance of the Division One schools, Camp Lindo has fourteen hundred and six students. This is based on uh, the website GreatSchools.org. Okay. Camp Lindo fourteen hundred and six. Uh, Logan has thirty five, almost thirty five hundred, almost thirty five hundred students. You know, mm -hmm. attendance wise. Who would you take in a game between Logan and Camp Lindo? I would take Campo. I would take Campo, but still, I mean, if you're going to base your divisions on on attendance, but why they don't base them on it's it's the the NCS is like half and half. It's like trying to satisfy two parties. We're going to keep right. enrollment here, but we're going to do competitive equity here. So you've mixed the two, and you've got these teams kind of gradually working their way up, or in some cases, working their way back down. Logan well, think, has always stayed in division one i'm still not clear on how that's happened but uh well i think that's why hopefully they'll maybe adopt this proposal they have on the table where you can have some flexibility within the divisions after the season so that you know camp Belinda would be in division two for the playoffs right um i mean logan wouldn't be a division one team for the playoffs either because of their their record right, but right. it just gives you more flexibility that's all um, um you know, if you're going to base your divisions on, a t I know they, it's a combination of competitive equity and and size. Still, you should have some consistency in this. I mean, a school like Camp Alinda with 1,400 kids should not be playing in a, a uh, in the same division as a school with 3,500 kids. Well, we're not talking about well. In that case, the the people, who, the people who uh, argue for competitive equity and the example you're using is a prime example of why there is competitive equity because Logan is not beating Camp Lindo, in my opinion. No, I agree. Now, that's 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 the reason there's competitive equity. Uh, it's like. Campo keeps saying competitive equity, and and I don't think they belong in Division One. Let's get let, let me make that no. clear. But for somebody who keeps, um, you know, saying that he dislikes competitive equity, it's almost like they keep shooting themselves in the foot because they keep winning. Right. <laughs> no, that, that, that's what I was. That's what I was going to say was that you know they they've kept winning lower divisions. They keep moving up a little bit by a little bit by a little bit, and they keep winning. Right. So if they if they uh you know kevin macy's been very consistent and in your monday morning lights article he said quote if we do get in we'll just go, we'll just go to show north coast that they've got to scrap the competitive equity format he's been pretty consistent with that through the years they don't like the north coast sections competitive equity but every year he proves himself wrong by winning <laughs> Right. At a higher and higher and higher and higher level. All right, so Kevin and Macy play a great game on winning. Friday and give give San Ramon all at once. What are we going to say then? Well, I mean, it's the same. Th you can say that their Camp Lindo, given its small size attendance wise, is being punished for winning. For is being punished for having a one of the best coaches in Northern California. Right. So okay. if you had kept them in Division Three, I think that's where they were to begin with they would and, and just the division three pool so you take marine catholic out of there um they're winning the the, the section playoff every year by 30 points yeah. no i'm not saying you keep them in division three i think you move campbell and go up to division two but well they did that you know, and they won that <clears throat> all right well then you leave them in division two and you yeah, know there's yeah. gonna be other I mean, schools in division two that'll compete with them yep 
Uh, let's let's talk about one more thing before we uh, move on to the picks. Joseph, I mean, the, the CCS, you, you mentioned that you like that system better, but still yeah. you have the uh, the eighth seeds, and we pointed that out in our, uh, our um, uh, storylines out of the CCS, the unlucky number eights or the lucky number ones. Um, mm -hmm. Linus obviously was an unlucky number eight. Yep. Christopher, um, who else was on Hillsdale. that? Hillsdale. Hillsdale, you know. Um, that's and we see that in basketball too because the CIF uses that uh this system where they put the best teams in one division and the next eight. So you really don't want to be an eight seed, you want to be a one seed in the lower division, yeah. which uh, I don't I don't think that's a flaw in the system because no matter what system you have, someone's got to go play the number one seed, right? Yeah. Right? It's just that you're the difference between an eight and a one in, in division open division one and division two like Mitty, for instance by getting hammered against valley christian last week ends up falling out of the top 150 in cal preps and ends up as a number one seed in divisions two uh -huh. instead of potentially a number eight seed or a number seven seed in the uh open division one bracket where they would have been playing sarah or saint francis so now let me <laughs> ask something though <clears throat> why can't you take Mitty? And make them the number eight seed in division two. That way, they would get the number one seed in division one, and it might not be a. It might not be. I'm mean, gonna be a lot different. What do you make Mitty the what the number eight? The seed number eight seed in division, in division two. one. You mean? No, in division two. What that way they have to play, play the number one seed in division two. Uh, that doesn't make it. That doesn't make yeah. much difference. They're still the favorite in division two. All right, the then, is, yeah, then make them. The, they played themselves out of, you know. All right, then make them the eight. Then make them the, they make ended them up not having to play Sarah. One. Make them the eight seed in Division One, and they have to play Sarah again. No, yeah, that's that was yeah. one thing. But uh, again, you got to write this all in your bylaws, and you have to, you know, the point system. You know, I was telling Joseph offline. I mean, I used to do the points when it was a little more simple, where you could do that the night before, but now you have to wait for the Cal Preps ratings. It's not even. Yeah, We're doing 50, 50 teams like that. So, anyhow, let's uh, lively show as always. Let's get on to our picks. Uh, 16 more games. Uh, we are coming in, we are limping to the finish line. Joseph and I both went nine and seven last week. Mike Lefkow went eight, and eight. Uh, Mike Lefkow trails by eight games. Um, in the standings, I don't even want to know what I trail by. In the lead, and Dykus is 18 games back. 18. Uh, all right. Let's You're the go. You're open days of our picks, aren't you, Joseph? Uh, I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are going to start off with the CCS Open Division I. Um, this, this game will be played on Friday night. It's Wilcox, seventh seed, traveling to number two seed St. Francis. These teams scrimmage each other every year at the beginning of the year. year but as Paul Rosa told me the other day, um, scrimmaging them in August is a little different than playing them in november so uh i'm gonna let you go first joseph dykus who you got in this one you know if, it, if they were playing at wilcox i might be tempted but i think st francis they're just playing they're playing so well right now i think they i think they win mike left i don't think I, I think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be a 10 point game i don't think it's gonna be okay a blowout mike left cow yeah i'm gonna take st francis and i agree with joseph i don't think it'll be a running clock but St. Francis wins. Yeah, I also think it's going to be competitive. Uh, Cal Preps is 31-17. I can be I can see something like that, maybe 30 to 20, 28-17, something like that. Uh, but I also have St. Francis winning. Uh next game on the list, also in the same division, CCS Open Division One, where Valley Christian, red hot at the end of the season, uh, played Sarah as well as anybody this season. Uh will be on the road as the sixth seed playing against St. Ignatius, a team that uh, beat Valley Christian last month by a point uh, in San Jose. This game's going to be played in San Francisco. 5.30 kickoff, according to the CCS website for this mm. one. Um, Valley's coming off a 35 nothing win over uh, Mitty. I think Valley is playing really well right now. I got Valley winning this one. Cal Prep says 19-17. I think it might be about a touchdown difference. Uh, Joseph, who you got? I've got Valley Christian too. Like you said, they're playing so well right now. Mike Lefkow. 
I'm going with Valley, but I, I, it could be a two-point game. I think it'll be close. All right. This next one on the list, Los Gatos will be at home uh, for the third year in a row to play a WCAL team in the first round of the Open Division One playoffs. Well, last year I think it was called Division One. There was no open part of it. They're going to be at uh, home to play Reardon, which uh, because SI had more points, ended up being the uh, five seed. Um, and they're going to be on the road, seven win Reardon. Uh, Kel Preps has taken Los Gatos to win this game, 35-31. Uh, Joseph, I'm going to let you go first. Who you got? You know what? I think this is finally the year that Los Gatos beats a W Cal school in the first round of the playoffs. And I think it's going to be 35, 32, 40, 35, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think Los Gatos wins. Mike Lefkow. I'm also going with the Cats. I think they're an experienced team, and I think they'll all put it together. And believe it or not, Los Gatos, I have Los Gatos winning this game uh, yeah. as well. Um, I think having played Pittsburgh and – Grant, Grant, I mean, mm -hmm. if he had played Live Oak, they Live Oak, I don't think would be undefeated going into the playoffs. Uh, that game was called off, and Moscatus could have taken the forfeit win, but picked up Grant. I think that will help them in a game like this. Um, and same with Pittsburgh, two high level right. programs. I think Reardon is a obviously a very good pro, a very good team, very good program. They're you know, seven wins. I mean. In the W Cal, where they finished yeah. third, third in the mm -hmm. league, a uh, lot of lot of weapons on uh, Reardon's team. I've been there for the two Los Gatos Heartbreakers. Um, won't be there on Friday night. It'll be Glenn Reeves at uh, Los Gatos on Friday night. Um, I think the Cats win, but I think it's gonna be really close. I mean, the la I can't I can't get much closer than last year losing in overtime to Mitty. Yeah, on a walk off because. Danny Sullivan goes for two, and it can't get any worse than uh, Bellarmine when Los Gatos was about ready to break a tie in the last minute, throwing a pick and 94-yard interception return for a touchdown to win the game for Bellarmine. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Glenn will have the report in uh, on our websites on Friday night. So all of us going cats. We'll see how that plays out. CCS Division Two Menlo School, 9-1 and one at Live Oak. Menlo coach Todd Smith, according to Glenn Reeves, is a, a Live Oak alum. I think he's going to spoil his uh, alma mater season. I think uh, Menlo having lost last week, I think that's going to get them focused. And I worry about Live Oak having won an emotional game last week coming down a little bit. So I've got Menlo winning. Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I'm still taking the home team with this one. Give me Live Oak. Mike Lefkow. I'm going to go with Live Oak as well. I think they're a little bit of an underrated team coming into this thing. Cal Preps has Live Oak winning 22-21. <clears throat> also in this division, we talked about Mitty falling out of the <clears throat> Open Division One bracket into the one seed with a 5-5 five and five record. Uh, <clears throat> Danny Sullivan's team, who was, uh, the Cinder as Joseph, I think, pointed out. Uh, the Cinderella in, team. The Cinderella team last year in the, in the top bracket going all the way to play Sarah in the final. Um, they're going to be playing at Foothill College against Christopher coming off that heartbreaking loss last week to Live Oak. Christopher had a 21-0 lead early and ended up losing. Um, I got Mitty winning. Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I've got Mitty winning as well. Mike left Cal. Yep, I'll make it a sweep. And Cal Prep says Mitty 28-20. Uh, CCS Division Three, Scotts Valley nine and one at Aragon eight and two. Aragon's a three seed. I got Aragon winning. Mike Lefka, who you got? I'm gonna go with Aragon. Joseph, same. I'm going with Aragon too. And the computer says Aragon twenty one seventeen. Uh, Cappuccino at nine and one. They entered our rankings this week. They're gonna be at home to play Alasal, the seventh seed, also nine and one. Um, I've got Cap winning. Cal Preps's computer has uh, Alice L winning 31-28. Joseph, who you got? I've got Cappuccino winning. I think it's going to be the other way around. I think it's going to be 31-28 Cappuccino. Wow. Mike Lefkow. Yeah, I think Cappuccino pulls this one out. 
All right. Um, CCS Division Four, Lee, the fifth seed in CCS Division Four. They're going to be going on the road to play North Salinas at Rabobank Stadium, Rabobank Stadium in Salinas. Four o'clock kick. This is the first game of a doubleheader at Rabobank that night. Uh -huh. um, I got the home team winning. I got North Salinas. I mean, this is a tough trip for Lee to go down and also to play at four o'clock. Um, yeah, they're going to have to leave pretty early. I got North Salinas uh, winning. Joseph, who you got? My head says pick North Salinas because Lee is kind of banged up right now. And like you said, they're taking a trip down to Salinas. But I don't know. Defense. Lee's got a good defense. Defense travels. I'll take the Longhorns. All right. Mike Lefkow. I'm going to go with North Salinas. I think it's going to be a tough trip for Lee. I can make and up one spot in my uh, there you in go. standings if, uh, if this comes true. Cal Preps has uh, North Salinas winning 28-14. CCS Division 5, Los Altos uh, at Santa Teresa. Santa Teresa obviously had a big run last year. I don't see the Saints making the same run this year. I've got Los Altos winning this one on the road. Joseph Dykus, who you got? I'll, I'm going back and forth on this one. I don't know. Santa Teresa, they, they went on that long run last year. Maybe some of the experience carries over to this playoffs. I'll take the Saints. All right. Mike Lefkow? Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Los Altos in this one. All right. And the computer says Los Altos will win 17-16. Hmm. Oh, Yes. All right. We're now on to the NCS, where the game that I'm, I'm going to be at in uh, Danville, where San Ramon Valley, 9-1 and one against Camp Alindo, 7-2-1. Camp Alindo coming off that uh, dramatic fourth quarter comeback to stun Akalani's last week. Uh, they're now – both these teams have moved up from Division Two. They were in the final last year of Division Two, and San Ramon won that one. The year before, though, Campo beat San Ramon in the semifinals of Division Two on its way to the championship. So these are the last two NCS Division II champs. Um, I got San Ramon winning and getting the rematch with De La Salle. Mike Lefkow, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Wolves. I think this is uh, – they just had a great year, and I think it will continue. Joseph? Yeah, going with the Wolves. Computer says Wolves will win 38-13. Hmm. Mm. That will uh, – that will send. Uh, that will uh, help with the competitive equity argument. Yeah. No more competitive equity. Um, Clean Valley game. You're going to be at Joseph. They're going to be I going will. back to California. Now uh, they had a little uh, issue at the end of their game a couple weeks ago, uh, in which uh, I guess there was some excessive celebrating at midfield and maybe a gesture or two. Um, talked to Nick Tisa about it, uh, the Clayton Valley coach on Sunday says that, uh, they, it's not going to happen again. Um, but they got to go back to California, even though they're the four seed, they lost a home game. Mike left. What do you think? They lost a home game and they suspended eight players last week for their game against De La Salle. Um, they get those players back this week. I think Clayton Valley is going to go in there very fired up. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the punishment was a little bit excessive. I think Clayton Valley is going to go. I mean, they could have either done the one game suspension or the, uh, or, or, or it, losing the home game. The we'll talk about that. I would have put them on the road rather than yeah. suspending those guys. But I mean, the thing is, it, the punishment was excessive, and I think the uh, Uglies are going to be uh, pretty fired up for this game. And if you're asking me, for, should I go ahead and give the prediction? Give your, you, prediction. Yeah, your prediction. I think, I think Clayton Valley is going to win this game. I think they're going to go in. Uh, they're going to want this one badly. I think both teams are going to be fired up for this yeah, one. Yeah, I'd say in so California, too. I don't think California was too happy about a team celebrating in the middle of its field. No, they weren't. They Which were. kind of happened on Sat on Friday. Well, it didn't kind of. It did happen when Akalani or Campolinda did the same thing at Akalani. Now, I don't know. I haven't seen the video of what happened here with Clayton and uh, California, so I don't know how excessive it was. Um, all I know is that what, what the result was, suspensions and then losing a home game. But I also think California is going to be pretty fired up um, after, you know, 
a team celebrating on it on its home field. So I'm actually taking the Grizzlies to win this game. Uh, Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm sure Clayton Valley's gonna be fired up. But I think California is gonna be gonna want to get some revenge too. If a few weeks ago someone you know shows you up on your home field, yeah, I'm taking the Grizzlies. Oh, there's I mean, a reason why you're at that game, really Joseph. Yeah, the, Joseph, there's a reason why you're at that game. Yeah, this should be a good game. This should be a great game. And California is favored by the computer, twenty-eight to twenty. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, NCS teams, that's for sure. Yeah, this should be a fun game. Uh, NCS Division Two Heritage at uh, Redwood. This is the five seed uh, is Heritage four and six record, as Mike Left got pointed out. Poor Liberty at home with seven and three record and beat Heritage and Heritage's in the playoffs because the the way the NCS predetermines divisions before the season and then picks the eight teams that they think are the best from each division. Fortunately, Liberty was in Division One, and Heritage uh -huh. was a predetermined Division Two team. All that said, I got Redwood ending Heritage's season. Uh, Joseph, who you got? Uh, I'll take the home team, Redwood. All right, we're both going Redwood. Um, Mike Lefkow? Yeah, I think Redwood pulls this one out. Computer I think it's a close game. You think it's going to be close? The computer says it's going to be close too. Uh, computer has Cal Preps has Heritage winning 27 24. Hmm. Um, just a few more games left. We got Rancho Catate, the sixth seed in Division Two NCS at Granada, the three seed. Rancho obviously has a rich history in football, but uh, uh, down year for, by its standards at six and four, right? They're normally way up there. Um, yeah, usually better. That said, I got Rancho Catate winning. Mike Lefkow, who you got? I'm going to go with Rancho Cotati. I think their playoff experience will do them good. Yep. Joseph? Yeah, I'm taking Rancho, too. And the computer has Rancho winning 31-24. Uh, NCS Division Three. Las Lomas is at home. When the brackets came out, uh, originally had Ukiah at home playing uh, Los, Los Lomas. And we didn't uh, we, we didn't raise our eyebrows, given the way the NCS has league champions host Blah blah blah, you know. But turns out the game is in Walnut Creek, so Las Lomas will be at home at nine and one, playing Ukiah seven and three. I got the Knights winning. Mike Lefkow, who you got? I'm gonna go with Las Lomas. Uh, Joseph yep. got Las Lomas too. All right, computer has uh, Las Lomas rolling forty-two to twenty. We got two more games left. NCS Division Five, Piedmont. The great story Mike Lefkow wrote about it in our Monday morning lights column. Seven and three this year, back from uh, pretty much the deathbed, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were yeah. way, they were down and out last year. Uh, they're going to be on the road to play Alhambra, the four seed. I got Alhambra winning to end Piedmont's run, but Mike Lefkow, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Alhambra on that one. Joseph? I'm going to make up one more game on you guys. I'm gonna, I'll take Piedmont. I'm going to take Piedmont. Computer has Alhambra winning 41-26. Last game on the list. This should be a good game. St. Mary's of Berkeley. This is, I think it's on it is on Saturday, one o'clock. St. Mary's Berkeley, the sixth seed at the three seed Salesian. Salesian's eight and two. St. Mary's Berkeley six and four. Uh, I got Salesian winning. They always seem to win these playoff games at home. Mike Lefka, who you got? Yeah, I think Salesian's got a real good team this year. I'm gonna go with Salesian. Joseph. I'll take St. Mary's Berkeley. I mean, I think these are two good teams, two good coaches. You're trying to make up some ground, aren't you? Trying to make up some ground here in these uh well, it's these only a first game, the first time yeah. they played this Yeah, season. and uh, the computer has the Legion winning 22 to 19. Uh, awesome. Before we call it a day, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to pick our uh, champions in each of the divisions. Let's go with the CCS first. Um I'll go my CCS winners, and then we'll go Joseph, and then uh, Left Cow, and then we'll go to the NCS. So in the CCS, I've got, for the open division part of that top bracket, I've got Sarah winning. Mm -hmm. The division one part of that bracket, I have Valley Christian coming uh, coming in and winning the division one part. I've got the third seeded Sacred Heart Prep Gators winning division two, top seeded MA winning division three, Third seed of Branham winning Division Four and second seed at Overfelt winning Division Five. 
Joseph, who you got? So I'm going with Sarah in the open division. I actually think Los Gatos is going to win division one. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Mark Crail loves you. Yes. Uh, Mark Crail, I know you watch these or read these, so uh, hope you enjoy that. Uh, I have Mitty winning as a one seed Division Two, Cappuccino, Division Three, Mountain View, which is the second seed. I have them winning Division Four, and then Division Five. Darren, you and me are in agreement. I think Overfelt wins Division Five. All right, Mike Lefkow. I'm going to go with uh, Sarah in the open. I'm going to agree with Joseph. I think Los Gatos pulls off Division One. Um, Division Two, I'm going with Mitty. Division three, I'm going to uh, pick Aragon. I think Steve Sell hmm. pulled one off on this one. All right. And uh, Branham in division four <clears throat> and uh, Woodside in division five. Very good. Let's go to the uh, NCS. Uh, I've got De La Salle winning the open part. The next one was really tough. Almost had to flip a coin on this, but um, I think San Ramon. Um, wins an overtime game against Pittsburgh to, to go to state. Um, but man, that, that was a tough one to pick. Uh, El Cerrito winning division two, Marin Catholic three, Akalani's four over San Marin, by the way. Mm -hmm. but it's a rematch, and I think they're gonna pull that off. Miramani will win division five, Salesian division six, and Clear Lake division seven. Uh, Joseph, who you got? So in the open division, I'm going to pick San Ramon Valley again. I think okay. they, they pull it out. Divi then in Division One, De La Salle, they'll beat Pittsburgh. El Cerrito okay. is in Division Two. I think Marin Catholic wins Division Three. Akalani's, like like you say, uh, will get his revenge in, against San Marin in the championship game to win Division Four. Miramonte takes Division Five. I have St. Mary's Berkeley channeling the spirit of uh, World Series champion Marcus Simeon, uh, St. Mary's Berkeley alum. I picked them, I think, last year to win the Division Six playoffs. Okay. Didn't come true. I'll keep picking them until they do finally win a championship, so they'll win. Okay. And Division Seven, I have Berean Christian. They're, uh, they've scored over 40 points in each of the last three games. Their offense is clicking. And I think they're, they're hot at the right time. So – Pick an upset there. Mike Lefkow. I'm going with De La Salle on the open. I think this is a magical year for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So I'm going to go with them in Division One. There you I go. Think El Cerrito goes Division Two. Marin Catholic, Division Three. I'm going to uh, beg to differ with you guys and go with San Marin in Division Four. I think a championship game between Akalanes and San Marin would be up there. Um, I'm going to go with Miramani in Division 5, Salesian in Division 6, and Clear Lake in Division 7. Clear Lake is a very good football team, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Guys, anything else to add? It's been a long show, yep. but uh, very productive. It's, it's been a long show. I'll, I'll throw out one other prediction. The more I've been thinking about it, I don't know if I would say that Amador Valley is going to beat Pittsburgh. But I think that game is going to be a lot closer than people would expect. I think it's going to be a one possession. Pittsburgh is going to win a one possession game against Amador Valley because that that Amador Valley defense is legit. Mike Lefkow. Yeah, would, mm -hmm. Well, riding on Joseph's coattails, it, when I was in high school, an Amador Pittsburgh first round match in the playoffs, everybody would have picked Amador. They were a powerhouse when I was in high school. Um, but I disagree with you, Joseph. I think Pittsburgh is going to win this one by at least two scores. This is a very good Pittsburgh team. Um, that's why I was going so far, you know, back and forth on who's going to win that division. Uh, San Ramon with Luke Baker, senior year, uh, Marco Jones. Um, that's why I went with the Wolves, but I could easily see Pittsburgh going, doing what Mike said. Uh, they're not going to get a chance at De La Salle. I could easily see them winning three games in um, the the Division One part of that bracket and and going to state, which is their goal. So, mm -hmm. uh, I if that San Ramon Pittsburgh game happens, I cannot wait to see it. Um, but 
you're telling me we're not going to see it, Joseph, because you got San Ramon beating De La Salle in week two of the playoffs. So you're going to, so maybe they will get their chance at De La Salle. Maybe they will. Maybe they you know, will. If he plays De La Salle, that might be like, remember a few years ago when we uh, went to that Antioch Monta Vista game in the uh, NCS playoffs and looked like all every Pac 12 coaching staff was out there that night. Exactly. Yeah, I think you could have that for a Pittsburgh San Ramon Valley game, too. All right. Guys, it's been fun. Uh, Los Gatos is going to be very happy. Uh, Reardon, uh, we, none of us picked Reardon. I was, and even the computer. That was, wow. Yeah. The cats getting getting respect from us. Yes. I think Reardon's a weird does, does, really that mean that we're, does that mean that we're jinxing them? Jinxing the cats by picking them? Is that how this works? Well, that's how Cal High ten, uh, how Cal High Sports we'll, might. We'll we'll find out late Friday night. We will. We'll find out. Well, earlier than late Friday night, we'll find out around nine o'clock on Friday night. Also, um, if I picked, if we pick the correct division winners, do we get an extra point? Do we get points for that in the standings? I'll give you guys extra pizza when we pick our, our all bang team. Okay. We can, we can order a, we, We'll order another pizza. Um, that's a wrap. Anything else? I hopefully we're done.